Uh, today we are going to talk about a uh, fast API and why uh, it's a powerful way framework. So uh, this is the agenda for today. Uh, first of all, I'm going to present myself. Then uh, we are going to cover a short introduction to fast API. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the two pillars uh, of fast API. This is the Pydantic and Python types and the concurrency and async programming. Uh, after that, we are going to uh, see how you can install a fast API and uh, what is the basic usage of the framework. Uh, then we're going to talk about the advantages of, of fast API with the IDEs. And uh, at the, the last part of the presentation, we are going to go uh, deeper in the framework and uh, cover uh, a few concepts like the path and query parameters, the body parameters, uh, the responses, uh, uh, the form and data, and the request files that you can uh, send to the endpoints in Fast API. And finally, uh, we are going to uh, do a, a short demo, a couple of examples of what we uh, checked on, on the previous slides. Well, so who am I? Uh, my name is Camilo Torres Botero. Uh, I am a full stack uh, developer uh, and I work on the Take Command Help account. Uh, I have been working at software uh, for one year and four months now. Uh, I studied systems engineer at the University of Antioquia here in Medellin. And I started working as a developer since 2013. I did my master's degree in data engineering at EAFIT University, also in Medellin. And that's where I started working with Python. Um, since then, uh, I focus on working with Python projects. I have always liked web development at web, at, and web frameworks. Uh, so the first projects uh, with I have worked with, with Python web frameworks uh, were with Flask. Uh, and uh, now uh, in Take Command Help account, we work uh, with Django. So um, I'm passionate about web development, as I told you, and I want to give you this talk about Fast API, uh, which I do not consider myself an expert, uh, only like a, a passionate about uh, web developing uh, and frameworks uh, with Python to do that. Uh, so uh, I wanted to share like an introduction of Fast API and an interesting fact about this framework is that it was created by a Colombian guy. Uh, more things I can tell you about me is that I like video games a lot, but since I am a new dad, no, I enjoy my time with my baby, uh, my wife. I'm learning new things every day, <laughs> how to be a good dad. I love dogs. I have two of them. Their names are Ozzy and Jagger, uh, inspired of uh, rock singers. So I love rock music and metal music uh, too. And as I told you before, I live in Medellin, Colombia with my wife, my baby, and my two dogs. <coughs> well, let's get started with past API. So, a uh, quick introduction. Uh, if you go to the Fast API web page, uh, you can see this that this is some other uh, fast web framework for building APIs with Python. Uh, it's based on the standard Python type hints. So the key features of Fast API is that it is fast. It has a very high performance. It's fast to code. Uh, we are going to see in the next slides that you can automate a lot of things with Fast API. Um, according to the official web page, uh, the speed of develop new features can, can be increased about 200% to 300% uh, thanks to the automate things that you can do with Fast API. 
And also because of this, uh, your code uh, will have fewer books uh, because it avoids the injection of, of induced human errors. Um, it's intuitive uh, because of the Python type hints um, and uh, Pydantic. It has a, a great editor support. It's designed to be easy to learn. Uh, the documentation is very easy to read and is not uh, a long text uh, to, to understand. Uh, and uh, the things that made fast API easy to learn and uh, that gives the, the capabilities to automate a lot of things is because it's, it is a, a standards uh, based. Uh, it uses the standard for open API uh, and the JSON schema. So as I uh, told you before, it was developed by Sebastian, Sebastian Ramirez. Uh, he is a Colombian guy. You can uh, search for his GitHub and look that he's a, he has a lot of uh, great projects, uh, but his greatest project is Fast API. Um, Fast API stands on two great frameworks. This is, these are the two pillars of Fast API, Pydantic and Starlet. Pandantic is used for data validation and Starlet is the one used for the web parts and the asynchronous code. <clears throat> well, uh, because the two pillars are the, the Python types and the synchronous code, we are going to cover a, a, a few uh, of these points here in, the, in these next two slides. So if you have developed software with Python before, uh, you know that Python has support for optional type hints, uh, also called type annotations. And these type hints or annotations uh, are a special syntax that allows declaring uh, the type of a variable. Uh, if you have seen it before, uh, the, you can add time hit, type hints to Python uh, uh, using the, the columns symbol after the variables, like in the image here in the, in the picture, uh, in the slide. And you can declare uh, all the standard Python types, integer, float, uh, booleans, bytes. Um, also, uh, there are some data structures that can contain other values, uh, like dictionaries, lists, sets, or tuples. Uh, and also, the internal values can have their own types. You can do this also with type hints in Python, declare the, the data structure, and then the type of data that is inside the data structure. Um, a Python that type can be optional. Um, that is, uh, a variable could be none or could have a string value, for example. Uh, so to make a, a type optional, you can use the optional class from the typing module. Uh, and you can declare a, a value that could have a type like a string, or, but that it could also be none. Um, these optional types could be declared with another approach. Uh, and this is using uh, another class from the typing module, the union class. So you can also uh, <clears throat> set the, the union class for the typing and put inside the union the two possible types, for example, none or, or integer. Um, According to the Path uh, API documentation, this approach of using the union class will be more readable. But if you use Python 3.10, you can forget about the union and the uh, optional classes and use the pipe uh, operation to, to declare optional types. Um, you can also declare uh, a class, uh, the type of a variable, so, for example, if you are working with a software and you have a class employee with a name a property inside the class, then you can declare 
the variable to be the type uh, employee. And then uh, if you do that and, and you work with types, you are going to see that you can access uh, editor support and a lot of other things uh, from using this, this typing uh, hints and the, and the um, editor support will be available for you. Uh, so uh, talking about these, these type hints, uh, these are the base uh, of Pydantic. And as I said before, Pydantic is one of the pillars of a uh, fast API. This is a library uh, to perform data validations. Uh, and with this, you can declare the shape of the data as classes with attributes. Uh, and each attribute will, will have a type, like the example image. Actually, this is the Pydantic model. And we are going to use this a lot with Fast API. Um, uh, with Pandytic and standard Python, we can also add additional metadata uh, in these types hints uh, using the annotated class uh, from the typing model. We are going to see that these annotated class are going to uh, provide us more capabilities to add more information to the types and the parameters, the functions, and the, the models that we are using uh, in our applications. So to summarize um, this part, Fast API uh, takes advantage uh, of the type hints, and it can do several things uh, with it. Uh, you can get editor support, you can get type checks, uh, you can convert data. This is one of the key features of Path API, and you can validate data. And I think one of the best uh, characteristics that Fast API has is that it will use all of these type hints and the Pydantic models to automate uh, your API documentation using the Open API standard. So we are going to see that in the next slides. <clears throat> and the second pillar of Path API is the asynchronous programming and the concurrency. So <clears throat> asynchronous code just means the, that the language has a, very, has a way uh, to tell the computer or the program that at some point in the code, it will have to wait uh, for something else to finish elsewhere. Uh, the computer or the program will come back every time uh, to review if the task uh, has finished. And if the task has finished, uh, it will continue whatever it had to do uh, with the with the response of the of that task. Uh, if you have developed applications with Node.js, maybe you are familiar with this asynchronous concept. Um, it is called asynchronous uh, because the computer or the program doesn't have to be synchronized uh, with the running tasks, uh, waiting for the exact moment that the task finishes. Uh, and waiting for, for the result to continue uh, the work. Uh, contrary to asynchronous, uh, there is uh, uh, the synchronous uh, programming. Um, this is also called like sequential programming uh, because the computer follows all the steps in sequence uh, before switching to a different task. Um, so <clears throat> when you think of an asynchronous a way of programming you can think uh, for example in the real life uh, you can think in a in a burger shop for example with the cashier uh, taking orders and and uh, give you turns to wait for the hamburgers this is like a real life example but you uh, don't have to wait here uh, the the burger <laughs> waiting uh, you have you don't have to wait for the burger uh, seeing that the cashier you have you can go and wait at, at the table talk and then start looking at the at, at the screen and when it's your turn you can go for your hamburger this is this example is very well explained in the uh, fast api documentation you can go there and you are going to see how they explain uh, the concurrency and the, and the parallelism concepts. 
And so these, these capabilities of concurrency uh, and asynchronous programming uh, are uh, built with fast API thanks to the Starlet um, framework. Uh, Starlet is a, a web framework that gives uh, capabilities to the to the endpoints to be asynchronous using the async and await uh, words in, in the Python code. Um, <clears throat> there is maybe a common confusion between concurrency and parallelism. So as you can see, concurrency uh, is the ability to 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 the from for the program to wait for another task to finish. But parallelism will be the uh, capabilities of do multiple tasks at the same time. This is commonly uh, related with the CPUs or the threads in your in your software. Well, so let's continue. Uh, now uh, we are going to take a look uh, of from a more technical side of Pass API, how to install it, and a few of the core concepts of the framework. So you can install Pass API very easily with, with PIP, um, and you will have to use um, an asynchronous server like Ubicorn to run the Pass API uh, applications. So this is a Hello world example of how you are going to use fast API is as simple as importing the fast API class that will have all you need to run the server. And then uh, with the instructions uh, to run the server with Ubicorn, you are going to have uh, the server running in your local host environment. Um, this reload Keyword that you are seeing there is for development purposes. It's just to uh, reload the, the the server after you make some change in your code. And we are going to see uh, that after you run the server, you immediately have access to the automatic uh, documentation. Um, so how is this automatic documentation uh, done? Fast API generates a schema uh, with all your API uh, using the Open API standard. You can check the, the Open API standard in the official web page. Um, that schema includes definitions of the data sent and received by your API using the JSON schema. Um, and after you run the server, uh, as this slide is showing, uh, and you type uh, in the URL uh, the path docs, you can see the documentation generated automatically by, by Fast API. And also you can check the, the JSON schema uh, with the path openapi.json. We are going to see this uh, in the examples at the end of the presentation. With this openapi.json, uh, you can use Another tools for 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 create API documentations like Redux. So, uh, by default, a uh, fast API comes with these two tools for generating automatic documentation: Swagger uh, and Redux. Um, the important thing to know is that with this schema, a uh, fast API is going to generate automatic documentation, and you can use another tools to generate documentation, not only Swagger or Widow. <clears throat> well, because of the type hints and um, Pydantic, we are going to have a lot of advantages uh, with the IDEs. Uh, if you are, you, you, you usually uh, work with PyCharm or Visual Studio, uh, you will see that using fast API has a lot of advantages. For example, the auto completion, the 
uh, error checking, the code completion, yeah. and um, this is um, thanks to the to the type hints and the pydantic uh, libraries. Um, let's move forward. Well, uh, from now we are going to cover uh, like the core concepts of the uh, fast API framework. Uh, if you have worked before with uh, web frameworks, maybe you are familiar with some of these concepts. If not, uh, we are going to cover uh, a few of the definitions here. So with fast API, uh, you can declare uh, path parameters uh, or variables with the same syntax used uh, by Python format strings. Uh, if you are familiar with Flask or Django, uh, you will be familiar with this concept of path parameters. You can, de you can declare the type of uh, path parameter in the function uh, using the standard Python type annotation like we uh, talked before. Um, and this is one of the best features of Fast API. Uh, for example, you can say a path parameter is an integer and then send it uh, in the URL. So with that declaration, Fast API gives you automatic request parsing. Uh, we will see this in the in the examples at the end. Uh, but this works also with more complex types. Um, this also means that Fast API will give you data validation. Uh, with the same example, if you uh, put a string in the URL uh, at the path parameter and you declare it before as an integer, Fast API will show you uh, an, an HTTP error uh, because the path parameter should be um, an integer based on your based on your declaration. All of these changes you made uh, to your code will be reflected automatically in your API documentation. Uh, and this, all this data validation and parsing is performed thanks, thanks to Pydantic library, as we have talked in the, in the previous slide. Um, and I'm going to be switching between this slide and the next one to, to give you more uh, images or examples about what I'm talking about. Um, so as you can see uh, from what we have seen so far, uh, many of the fast API features are based on standard Python. So for example, you can also use uh, predefined value validations using Python's enum class. Uh, if you have a path operation, for example, that receives uh, a path parameter and you want uh, this parameter to have only three valid values, you can use the enum class. Uh, we will see this also in the examples, but this is a really good feature of Fast API. You don't have to worry about validations in, in for your parameters, for example, if you want to be, or to fix the, the possible values of the parameter. Um, also, uh, with Fast API, we can uh, declare query parameters. Uh, these query parameters uh, are the ones that comes after the uh, question mark. If you have a uh, work with these web frameworks, you can uh, check the, the query parameters after the question mark in the URL. Um, and all the same process uh, that uh, apply for path parameters also applies for query parameters. Uh, the data person, the data validation, uh, the automatic documentation. So um, uh, when you see a query parameter, uh, you see that this is not fixed the, uh, as a part of the path, like the path parameters. So they can be optional uh, and can have the default values. This means uh, we can use uh, here the optional uh, typing that I mentioned before in the in the typing slide, 
uh, and we are, if we are using Python uh, 3.10 uh, or after, we can use the pipe operation to declare these optional uh, query parameters. Um, so, as we talked before, uh, you can use the annotated class from the typing model to tell fast API which behavior do you want. So you can all add additional validations uh, to your query and path parameters. Um, Fast API has two important classes to achieve this, the query class and the path class, as you can see here in the, in the example images. Um, and we will use the annotated class to wrap all the validations we want and to send also metadata uh, from the parameters. For example, uh, you can say if a parameter is deprecated uh, and is from a previous version of your API, you can send these uh, kind of properties in the annotated class. Um, and a lot of things, for example, uh, you can set alias for the parameters, titles, you can add descriptions of the parameters uh, and understand, this will help to understand uh, what the parameters are used for. Uh, and also you can add validations, uh, like for example, the I mean a longitude or a max longitude a, for a string. You can add regular expressions to the validations. And also you can add integer validations, a, as you can see in the images like the greater or equal than. A, for example, if you need data parameter, a, don't be zero and be a greater than that or equal than one, you can add this kind of validations using the annotation class and the query and path classes uh, from fast API. <clears throat> well, uh, as we see uh, for validations for path and, and query parameters, uh, we can also add a body parameters uh, with more complex types of data. Uh, so, for example, uh, in this image, you can see there are three parameters, uh, one of each class, path, query, and body. Um, actually, the input in the example image uh, will expect uh, a JSON body with the attributes of an item. Uh, you can declare multiple body parameters, and fast API will expect the JSON body according to the parameters. Uh, Fast API will do the automatic conversion from the request. This is a great feature uh, for from the framework. Uh, so, for example, if the request has a parameter company and a parameter employee, a JSON body with the two objects will be expected and automatically transformed for you. Uh, also, you are going to see all of these uh, models and types in the uh, automatic documentation. And we are going to check that, that that also on the examples at the end. Uh, we have here uh, an, an example image of how the documentation is generated and how you can see uh, the schema and the, and the example data that you can send uh, to the endpoint. <clears throat> uh, As I told before, uh, if you are going to receive uh, two body parameters, uh, fast API will expect a JSON like this one with the two objects inside. And the documentation will also provide you the, these examples. Um, you can uh, validate uh, also the the body parameters uh, as we validate the, the path and the query parameters. And you can define a more, more complex data structures inside uh, your body parameters. And Fast API will understand this and, and give you the, the examples like in the image. So uh, as I said, the same way uh, there is a, a query and a path to define extra data uh, for query and path parameters. Uh, we will have a field uh, class 
uh, to add additional uh, validations uh, to the body parameters and the types inside it. Uh, and we can add the validation similar uh, like we say for the without for the query and the path parameters. Mm, one thing, one thing to take into account here that the field parameter used to add additional validations to to the body parameters uh, are, is a class from Pydantic, and the query and path classes to define uh, the extra validations for the query and path parameters are classes from Path API. So, um, as you can uh, add these type hints uh, to the models and to the request parameters, uh, you can declare the type used for the response uh, also using the, the type hints uh, and these type annotations. Um, so, if you add uh, the, the the return type uh, to the functions pass API uh, will use this return type to validate the return data. So if the data is invalid, uh, for example, you missed a field, it means, sorry. Yeah, it means that you um, are going to see an HTTP error uh, and we are going to see that also in a few minutes in the in the examples, but this is also a great uh, feature from FastAPI. The validations are automatically generated and you can see it in, in the browser and in the, the, the generated documentation. Um, but one of the... the output data, Otherwise, define it in the return type, and this is very important uh, for security validations. Uh, we are going to see also that, for example, using a user class and, and and a user with a password and the return type without a password. Uh, so. The, with this user example that I just said, um, you can define, uh, for example, a returning type uh, and the input data type is not exactly what the type declares. Mm, let me explain this before. Mm, you could want to return a dictionary, for example, or a database object, uh, but declare it as a pandactic model. So this way, the Pandacti model will do all the data documentation and validation, uh, and this will be automatically generated. Um, as I was uh, saying before, if you have uh, two user models, uh, one for the input with the password uh, and one for the output without the password, you can receive the user parameter. Uh, Fast API will transfer the JSON to the model and return the user after some operation, for example, a login, and by telling the endpoint, the endpoint to return the output model without the password. Um, and Fast API will do all the transformations and validations for you. Uh, this will also reflect it on the API documentation. Finally, uh, to cover the last concept, uh, the, the last core concept from the framework, and you can read form data and you can request uh, or add, add, add files to the requests using uh, uh, multiple classes from Fast API framework. Uh, so, for example, uh, for reading form data, you can use the form uh, class and Fast API will understand that you are sending data. Uh, through a form, like a login form with a username and a password. And also uh, to send uh, files uh, through the request, you can use the uh, file or upload file classes. 
uh, with the blood file, you will have uh, more properties from 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 the send file, and you won't you won't have to use the uh, annotate uh, class as we are seeing here here in the image. Um, and also, this will be automatically uh, generated in the in the API documentation. All of the the automatic documentation. It can be tested uh, using the, the the generate swagger, and we are going to see that now in the examples. Well, let me change to the code. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Let me well, um, here we are going to see like a couple of all the features that we have seen in the previous slides. Uh, first of all, we are going to run the server as I show you in the in one of the first slides. So here I have installed uh, all what I need. I have installed. Fast API. I have installed a uh, Ubicorn as my um, uh, asynchronous server. Uh, I have installed Pydantic, some of the class classes from Pydantic to validate, for example, emails, um, and that's it. So if I uh, run Ubicorn, uh, I'm going to show you first. This is a uh, um, the same directory that I'm seeing here in, in PyCharm. So <clears throat> I'm going to tell Ubicron to run the, the main app that is here in the in the main file. And I'm going to use the reload feature to update uh, or to refresh my server with the changes that I made in, in my code. So after running uh, Ubicron, I, we can go to the browser. And we will have now the fast API uh, server running. This is uh, our first endpoint, the, the hello world endpoint. And as you can see here, and we are going to cover the other endpoint that I have here to see what fast API could do with the validation and the transformation of the data. So, if you uh, uh, add to the path the docs path, you are going to see the automatic generation uh, of the documentation with all of your endpoints. Uh, and at the end, you are going to see all of the schemas that you are using in your application. And this is the second option. Uh, for the automatic the, uh, documentation. This is uh, a tool called Redux. It's very similar. Uh, maybe it has a better user interface. And you can see here all the uh, endpoints and the examples for, for the uh, type of data that you are going to send, for example, in your, in your endpoints. So, Let's uh, try a couple of, of endpoints here. So first of all, uh, I'm going to explain what I, what I have here. Uh, I have like a simulate application uh, with uh, one main class is the employee class with some data inside. Uh, we can add uh, some validations inside the, this data, as we told you, as I told you in the in the previous slides. And we have a, another classes, for example, for a login, like the users I, I was talking about. And we have we can have a, a num a, to represent a fixed values, for example, for some endpoints. So if I uh, go, for example, through 
this endpoint. As you can, as I was talking before in, in the presentations, and you send a, an integer here in the path parameter, you will say that you will see that uh, the endpoint is responding right according to the parameter and the validations. But this is one of the various things I think Fasica have. So for example, if I put here, here a string, I will have an HTTP validation. I did not do this validation. This was automatically generated by my type hints and my pydantic models in past API. So as you can see, it is saying to me that uh, this parameter should be uh, an integer. And also, as we talk in the path parameters and the query parameters, uh, <clears throat> I can define validations for the parameters. Like I, I don't want to have uh, employee IDs with, with values uh, of zero. So uh, I can set the validation uh, for this parameter to be greater or equal than one, or for example, to be less or equal than uh, 1000. <clears throat> and if I put here a um, forbidden value, I will have also the validation for that parameter. And fast API will say, uh, which is the error here. Um, uh, it's saying, for example, that this input should be greater than or equal to one, uh, and the value that we are sending is zero. So if we send another uh, allowed value, uh, the endpoint will work as expected. And also for the, the other validation to the a less a, or equal than 2000, we can generate all these errors here. And we can also test this here in the uh, Swagger documentation. So as you can see here, um, automatically it is saying that we have to send a, a required parameter in the path, that is the employee ID, and also we have a query parameter, for example, for, for the pagination or, or, or limit some query in, in the endpoint. So if I execute this, uh, it will say that the, the parameter is required. And I can also test what I was showing uh, before uh, here in the, in the Swagger. Uh, documentation and I can see the, the body responses after hearing the endpoint using the 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 other documentation. Also if I add some kind of query parameter here I can see it in the in the response and I can also uh, validate them as we saw in the uh, query parameters slides. So for example, I can I can add the query parameters and I will see this in the in the possible uh, responses here in the API documentation. This is very, very useful. So if you are seeing, I'm not doing any kind of, of transformations uh, to the data here. Past API is taking care of all of this just to declaring uh, the types, to defining well the models, and to defining well the, the validations that I want uh, to, to make here there. So let's say, for example, uh, as we was saw, uh, seeing in the in the slide, uh, that we can have uh, parameters with fixed values. So let's say, for example, the employees uh, have a 
payment status and this stat this statuses can only have these three values active remove or frozen so <clears throat> e we are going to use this endpoint so for example if <clears throat> If I use the endpoint here with a different value uh, from the definer the there, a uh, fast API is going to validate that and and say that this parameter can only have a uh, three uh, possible values: uh, active, remove, or frozen. So I can a lot of the logic or I can avoid a lot of the boilerplate coding using fast APA, just defining the the types and the data structures. And if I go to the oh let me check the documentation. If we go to the documentation and we check the endpoint for the payments we can see that it has now the three possible values. It doesn't allow me to put another value here. And it will work as expected if I send the, the, the parameter. <clears throat> well, we are running out of time. So I'm going to, to show you the last uh, couple of things with Fast API, for example, about the a transformation uh, of the objects that are incoming to the endpoints and then how we can uh, return a response uh, and fast API will do the transformation. So let's say, for example, uh, we have a, an endpoint to create new users. So <clears throat> let's say the new user is going to type the username and the password but you cannot uh, return uh, the password. So we can, with Fast API, have, a, for example, a class uh, for the user input and a class for the user output. And uh, pay attention here to the detail. So we are, uh, for example, in the same point, uh, using uh, the user input parameter and we are returning the same user, but with this response model, as we said in the, in the slide, we are saying to Fast API that this is going to be the return class. So we are going to see uh, the created user. For example, we have no operations here, but let's say if the user was created successfully, we can return the user and we don't have to return the password uh, and fast API is going to do all these validations only with this uh, piece of code. So if I go to the user endpoint, I will see uh, that for example, uh, I can set here the parameters. And the response will have uh, uh, the, the fields that I defined in my output model. Um, so it, you can see the detail. I send this object to the endpoint and the response I get is the output object, but I don't do any kind of parsing here. I'm just saying to Fast API that the response model should be the uh, user out model. Mm. <clears throat> and we can uh, stay here uh, looking a lot of, of the examples that I show you in the, in the slides. This is just like a very short introduction to Fast API and how powerful it is to create a APIs and web applications. Um, 
but uh, you can uh, check all of the documentation to see all of the things that you can do. Um, we, I, I'm not going to cover the, the file examples, uh, but uh, I'm going to share the, this code with you and you can uh, try it and test it. And um, finally, this is like a, like a Hello World example of Pass API, but I'm going to show you uh, uh, for the last part of the presentation. Um, this is the, the official page, page of Pass API. This is the uh, burger example that I was talking about, but this is uh, a great tool that Fast API provides us and is a full stack Fast API template. So you can use this template to create a, a more complete a application and you can configure and set all the settings that you want to have for your application. You can use a copier, for example, to create a new project from this template and you can set a, all the, the properties that you want for your project and you will have a, a very complete initial template with Docker and a lot of tools that will help you to uh, deploy this in a production environment uh, with uh, integration with uh, SQL databases, uh, using ORMs and also regressions. Um, and uh, all, obviously with PyTest integrated. <clears throat> So uh, you can check uh, on this template if you can go deeper to all the fast API capabilities and features. And that's it. Uh, sorry, maybe you don't understand all of what I'm saying. I was a bit nervous, but I hope you enjoy the presentation. And if you have questions, please let me know. Uh, yeah, Camila, we have one question in the chat. Can you please check it? Yes, of course. Mm, that's for CPL. It uh, comes with testing modules. Uh, yes, uh, David. Uh, it has a uh, PyTest integrated. And, and as you can see in, in the temp, in the full stack template that I was showing, uh, you can use a, a PyTest uh, integrated with the endpoints and and the and the code that you are going to to make with Fast API. Uh, 